Hey guys, it's Fallen here back again, and today I'm going to be bringing you a deck profile that is a little old and probably not so relevant, but I really did have a lot of fun with this back when I used to play it, when it was, you know, not so relevant, not so overshadowed, and had some sort of relevance to it. But this is probably one of my favorite decks that I actually ever made, and one of my first decks that was really built around an archetype as a whole considering when I first started and the, the years after that I kind of didn't know what archetypes were and I didn't know that you know they have the same name so they all go together because of a certain reason I would throw stupid cards in that had nothing to do with the archetype and I would just congeal a deck that was like oh strong strong monsters defending monsters and then spells and tribes to accompany them and it didn't work well because it's like none of these pieces really match all together too well i'd have like weird archetype cards and like like i'd have gem knights mixed in with like karkuris and synchrons and it was weird but this is probably the first archetype deck i ever made and by all means i consider it to be one of my favorite decks probably my top three favorite decks so without further ado, I give you my Evelsor deck. Not for the year of 2017, but even though it is 2017, this deck profile is going to remind you probably a lot of the year of 2012, 2013-ish. Because it's when these cards were released and when they were more relevant and dominant. So, let's get you started here with our little Evel tiles. If you didn't know, these are all Reptile. All, well, all the monsters, at least, for the archetype are... Reptile, dinosaurs, and then dragons evolving in that order. They're all fire types, so, you know, I don't know, molten conduction, no, not molten conduction. Well, yeah, it, no, that's only for levels. But, you know, anything that supports fire kind of supports this deck, too, so just, just to have a little idea in your head on what you can do with it. I used to use molten destruction in this deck as a field spell. To make everything gain like 500 extra attack because they're all fire and only helps fire monsters. So I used to think that was pretty cool, especially considering this deck is filled with a few weak boss monsters, but their effects more than make up for it. Anyway, I'm sorry I ramble on so much in every video I make. None of this is scripted. I want you to know none of this is scripted. There's no script. Everything here is free form. While I'm while I'm separating, this is how I do this with one hand. I separate into little piles. And I just have them facing opposite ways so that way I can grab them. While I'm separating all these things, I'm looking at these cards and thinking, Oh, this is what I can say when I introduce this. This is what I can say when I introduce this. I can make this work well with this. And I'm really sorry that I am such a scatterbrain when it comes to this. And anyway, let's go on. So to start off with our Evil Tiles, we have Evil Tile Plario. So Plario is a one of in this deck for like one reason, and that's because... When it's destroyed and sent to your graveyard, it specifies that it has to be sent to your graveyard. You get to special summon one Evelsor from your deck, not your deck, your hand. <laughs> so, it's okay. It's what I would like to call borderline situational. And it does not say destroyed by battle. So, you know, your opponent's got a full field, but you think they won't do anything about it. So you summon, you special, or you summon this one. Dark hole the field, and they're like, okay, well. <laughs> or more realistically, let, let's go a little more realistic. You summon this, then you kaiju, inter uh, what is it called? Interrupt the kaiju, slumber the field, pop the whole field, this thing gets popped, you get out, you get to bring out a card from your hand, plus a kaiju, and if you bring out the right kaiju, you can probably go into another Xu play, so. <laughs> That's not bad. I, I wouldn't call this a bad card, just not the best card. There's actually one that has a similar effect to it, that... I would say has the weaker of the two effects, but has the better of the two effects, like, if that makes any sense. There's Plario. And here we have Odonto. I run two Odonto. Because he may be weak, but his effect isn't too bad. When it's normal summoned, you can special summon an Evelsor from your hand. So, that sounds kind of decent. Not too great, but I you can normal... And then special. And some of these, you know, Evelsors that you might draw into have effects that affect either the grave, they pop, 
they gain attack, or they bring out another Evil Sword to support them. So, if you have the right cards in your hand, if you have the right cards in your hand, this becomes a summon, and then you get two, and then boom, XZ right away. So that's not bad. It's probably situational as well, and I wouldn't say run more than two, but definitely don't run one because you're gonna wish at times that you had one of these guys in your hand because sometimes you draw into the perfect combination, but there is nothing to complete it because you don't have an Odonto. Now here, here's what I was talking about with the weaker but better effect. We have Gefiro, and Gefiro is one of those cards that I remember pulling back from Photon Shockwave, and I thought. Huh. Why are there only small little reptiles in this Evo category? I, I had only seen, you know, Danto and them for the longest time. And then it, it hit me. Oh, I have an Evosaur. I have Elias. And that's when I, this is when I started to realize these cards work together. And this is when archetypes became a thing in my head. And it's like, it all makes sense now. And what I realized with Gafiro was... He helps me recycle things from the grave, but if I do it correctly, I can bring back from the grave, from my hand, and or pop. And it's like, the only thing that I hate about Gafiro is he must be destroyed by battle. Only by battle. So this is one of those set and pass. You want to set him, set like a mirror force, or scrap iron or something. To keep, <laughs> I keep saying obscure things because I'm in that mentality of... It's like 2014, and things aren't that bad. So, yeah, you set him, set a back row or two, you pass. Hopefully they attack into it, and then you bring out something to defend you after that. So Gafiro is probably one of the better ones for late game. Not so much early game, but you don't want to not run into one of him, so running three isn't too bad. Now... Here we go. This is the star Evo tile of the deck, or at least one of the star Evo tiles of the deck. Now, I don't mean to, like, overhype him, but probably one of the best Evo tiles out there, other than the one coming after him, which is probably Evo tile Najasho. Now, Najasho, you tribute, or, well, not tribute. If this card in the field is tributed, you can special summon an Evo Sword from your deck. So, a lot of these cards that support the archetype tribute Evo Tiles to get Evo Swords out. And with Najasho, that means you're getting two Evo Swords out at the same time. And if paired with the right card, you get two out that are considered to be special summoned by an Evo Swords effect, which is how the Evo, I mean, with the Evo Tiles effect, which is how the Evo Swords get their better effects. They don't, you know, you can normal summon them, but. It's like summoning a vanilla, basically, because their effect doesn't play out. So, Najasho is a decent defense at 2,000, but he's probably not going to stay on the field long if you have the right cards in your hand or you have the right cards set. I used to try to use him with, uh, not, I forget what it's called, but you tribute a monster, your opponent tributes a monster. It's like non-targeting removal, basically, because it doesn't say target. I forget what the card's called. If I can remember it, I'll, I'll tell you, but... Um, basically, you tribute a monster, they tribute a monster, you go, not negative, you don't go plus on it because you got rid of a monster, but you replace the monster right after because it got tributed, so you get to bring out a monster, and then they're down a monster, so, not the worst thing. So, Najasho, definitely not a bad card, and of course, we have Evotel Weslo, little flip effect guy here, and simple, flip, special summon an Evil Sword from your deck. So at 1900 defense, he does, he's not as big as Najasho, but he's about as useful as him, as you can just set him, pass, and hopefully they don't run over you too bad. So it's a free, oh, you destroyed me, but I get to replace myself from the deck. Not your hand, not your grave, which is what I really like about this, because you have an Evil Sword that you've been sitting on, or not that you've been sitting on, that would mean that you had it in your hand, or there's an Evil Sword you need out. And it's not been, and it hasn't been coming out. You can bring it out. You can force it out, which isn't bad. So definitely three Westlow is not a bad idea. Now into the Evo Sores. Here we have Evo Sores Serato. I only run one Serato because he doesn't have a very useful effect, in my opinion. Keep in mind, this is just my opinion. But when you special summon by the effect of an Evo Tile, 
he gains 300 attack. That's it. It's, it's nothing, or 200 attack, my bad. He gains 200 attack, which isn't too special. That makes him a 2100 beater at level 4. Decent, okay? At all, by, all, or, well, by all means of a level 4, great, because that's higher than 2000, and it still has an effect, so that's great for a level 4. And if this, let's see... Each time this card destroys a mo an opponent's monster by battle, you add one Evotel from your deck to your hand. So, early game, you go Najasho, you use Evo Force, you get him out, you get another one out, and then you can run something over on your opponent's side, you add a, like a Westlow or another Najasho or an Odonto to your hand, so that way next turn, you have something to start another combo off. Decent, again, like I said, it's decent. I don't like him, I don't use him for that, I use him for Xyz plays, I use him for... A small defense wall. That's about it. Maybe I'll run more. Maybe you'll run more. Who knows? Next up, probably one of my favorites. Here we have Diplo. And he is MST on legs. Except for the fact that he's not a it's not a quick effect. It's just when this card special summon the effect of an Evil Tail, target one spar trap card your opponent controls, destroy it. So that's very self explanatory. I'm not gonna go on and on about oh, it can destroy so many things. I mean It'll get rid of like an anti-spell fragrance or your suspicion of a quaking mirror force or lost wind. I mean, I don't know, dude. Whatever, whatever you can find a use for it, use it. I think pendulums are considered spells, so pop a pendulum for free. Next up, one of the better ones in my eyes for Xyz summoning is Volcano. Now, Volcano's not strong. He's very weak for level 4 standards. He has level 3 stats in my opinion. And... His saving grace is when this card is special summoned from the graveyard, or no, I mean not even from the graveyard, I always just bring him back from the graveyard, that's my bad. When this card is special summoned the effect of an evil time monster, you can target an evil sore in your graveyard and special summon that target. It cannot declare an attack. So, basically, you summon him with like a Westlow, and then let's say your Diplo didn't make it that turn, so you bring it back, and then boom, you go into like a Dolka or a Lagia, or Utopia into Utopia the Lightning, you know? It gives it a bit of a diversity right there with that whole rank 4 toolbox we got available. So Volcano makes Xyz plays a lot easier and a lot faster to get off. But again, it relies on a grave, a monster in the grave, so make sure you set up. So Foolish Burial might not be a bad thing to run in this deck if you really want to. I mean... I think it's only at 1 right now, so that might not be too smart. But this is just the way I built it. I haven't really touched it for a few years, so I'm sure if you're watching this and you're actually interested in making the deck, you can make it 10 times better. And if you do, by all means, let me know what you did so I can see the way you think. Because the way I think, I think in the past. And now here we have 3 Elias. Great defense for level 6. It's got 2400 defense, 100 attack. You're going to keep it in defense anyway. Only level 6, and there's only one level 6 XZ, so that makes sense, I guess. And now when this card is special summon the effect of an Evotel, you can special summon one level 6 or lower Fire Dinosaur from your hand. Doesn't say Evosaur, Fire Dinosaur. So if there's any other Fire Dinosaurs that you can bring out that you might be running in this deck for whatever reason, he'll bring it out for you. And another thing is, this is the card... I combo off with Odonto a lot because I find that when I when I open up Odonto and Elias together, I do a lot better things like I'll Odonto into the Elias, so I have a defense wall, but then I get to bring out another one from my hand, so I get to bring out like a, a Volcano, and I can set the Volcano to defense as well. So then they'll be baited into hitting the the Volcano, then Odonto, and then I can go into like something else, and I, I get a, I get an Xz play after. And it's level 6, so there's only one level 6 XZ, Evelzar, which is, you know, Evelzar Dolka, which is arguably isn't the best. So I used to run Photon Strike Bouncer back when that was more relevant, and that worked well. Basically, any other rank 6 you can think of, probably a good target with this, considering if you have two of these in your hand, doesn't say you can't use them. Free rank 6 play. And lastly, we have Evelzor Darwino. Now, Darwino is an odd card to me. It's level 5, which doesn't fit in the archetype at all. Because they're level 4s or level 6s. 
But when a special summon by the effect of an Evo Tau, target one face up monster on the field, increase that target level by up to two. So what this does is if you have an Elias and you bring out your Darwino by like an Ajashio's effect or something, it doesn't say you can't target this card. So you can target the Darwino, increase it to level 6, go into a rank 6, or if you have a Diplo on the field, increase that Diplos by 1, and you have another 5 for rank 5 play. Personally, I run Volcasaurus, which isn't too bad. And alternatively, if you have the Najasho and the Evil Force, you get them off as both being Evil Tile effects. So you bring out two Darwinos, increase both of their levels by two and you can go into a rank seven play or increase both of the levels by one and go into another rank six play so more versatile for the higher level or not higher i guess higher level higher rank i should say actually higher rank xz plays or bringing your lower levels up to a rank or up to a level that you can go into a better rank for so again i find that darwin is a little situational and I, it could probably be put to better use, but the way I use it is just to bring a Volcasaurus and sometimes make a make a Soldier or something. I wouldn't say you do that. I say you could probably find better uses for it. You could probably run a better, like I was saying, you could probably make a, a rank 7, like, I don't know, Draco Sack or Big Eye. I know Big Eye got a reprint in Battles of Legend, I think, so I think he's level 7 or rank 7. So... If I can get a ha if I can get my hands on one of those, I'll probably splash in this deck too. So, because I'm perfectly able to do so. So yeah, Darwino opens up a few doors for you. Now to our spells and traps here. But here's a few one ofs that aren't like Evo related. You got Magic Cylinder, Mirror Force again. I was thinking way back in the day, as you can tell by the wear on this Mirror Force. This is uh, Structure Deck 2011. Same year as this playmat. Structure Deck 2011 was like, I didn't even know how to use Xyz, and now it's like, they're just so common to me. Like, I understand them so much better than I did back then. So, definitely replace it with like a Quaking, or I forget what the other one is called, but any of the better Mirror Forces out there, replace it with, replace this standard Mirror Force with one of the better ones by all means, because I know it's not the best card out there. But it's decent, so if you like this old school nostalgia feel, keep it in there. Or if not, Quaking or I think it's Shining Mirror Force. And Magic Cylinder, it's basically a troll card, kind of. You know, they attack me, no, you attack yourself. So, again, Mirror Force, add a different Mirror Force in, or any other trap that you could probably find more use for as a way of protecting yourself, like, I, I like to use negate attack because it ends the battle phase straight away. Again, another old card, but maybe considered better. Next up, we have Evolutionary Bridge. So, Evolutionary Bridge is activated when a monster you control is targeted for an attack. Target one Evo tile in your graveyard. Special summon that target. Switch the attack target to the monster and conduct damage calculation. So, what I like to do is let's see if i can provide a visual aid this time i know i i usually never do this so you have your gefiro and you got your two little buddies over here so you have volcano and diplo chilling in the grave along with your gefiro and you have let's see i don't know let's say you have your serato out on the field and you're you're going along, and your opponent wants to attack you. And your Serato didn't get that boost, so it's only 1,900. And they waste an Honest on you. Or something something ridiculous like that. So, Evolutionary Bridge. Bring back your Gefiro. They instead attack Gefiro, and I don't know if the attack, the attack boost transfers to this monster, or it's still Serato. So either way, it's like, okay, they gain 1,900, and they're crashing into a 400 wall. So long as they don't have Piercing, you're fine. Gefiro gets destroyed by battle forcibly by battle so he goes back to the grave then you fetch out volcano because of volcano's effect you get to fetch out diplo so that leaves you with three level fours on the field even if let's say serato does get rid of still you have two left which means you can overlay and go into any little rank four you have after if it's you know an accessible play to you so evolutionary bridge i feel like 
should be running at least two. And as we go through these spells and traps, I'm pretty sure you can find a card that you'd want to substitute out for another one of these. So I say run maybe two, but one, because it is kind of situational again, like I'm saying, but one works. But I mean, if you have two set, you can cycle that same loop. And if you do have a lot of them in your grave, you get a full board and you're probably not taking any damage. So it's not too bad. Next up, Evil Singularity. So this card makes XZ summoning stupidly easy just by sending a card and waiting. So target an Evil Tail monster and an Evil Soar monster in your graveyard. Special summon an Evil Zar, XZ monster from your extra deck. And if you do, attach those monsters to XZ materials. <laughs> So they get XZ summoned with two free materials that didn't have to be on your board in the first place and just a trap card. One simple trap card. So this is definitely a good late game kind of thing or let's say you brought out your Dolka and you brought out your Lagia or realistically you brought out like two Lagia and you know they want to you, you attack or something. And then they activate a quaking. Whoom, negate that. Destroy. Your other one attacks. They activate something else. Negate. Destroy. And then you activate one of these. And then, or if you have two of them, you activate the two that were set. Bring back a Neville Tower. Bring back a Neville Sword. Bring back a Evil Tower. Bring back a Neville Sword. And then you got two more Evil Zars to work with. They both have their effects working because they do have XZ materials. So that lets you continue your attack because you didn't technically end the battle phase. So... Definitely not a bad card. I don't think it's the most situational card. And I think that it can probably turn things around for you. Definitely if you haven't been... If like if they've just been solemn striking your special summons. Black, dark holing your field. Regeking your board. You get to recycle. And go into things that you've been meaning to go into. However, they're limited to only Evelzars. So not bad. There we go. Evil Instant. These are the cards. This is one of the cards I was talking about. The tributes to special summon an Evil Sword from the deck. So Najasho, great target for this. A Westlow that just got flipped face up, great target for this. Odonto that's on the field, and you don't want it to get run over by something, so you don't take a ridiculous amount of damage. Evil Instant it. And I would say that it's a better card because it does say tribute on reptile type, not an Evil, not an Evil Tile. But you can only bring out Neville Soar. So it limits you to what you can do. But I would say maybe there's a way to like cross this in with dinosaurs. So you have, you know, just like a normal reptile. But that, that's really stupid. And now that I'm like thinking about it, I don't know. You know, uh, Evil Soar aliens. All the, all the aliens are reptile types. You don't even have to run any Evil tiles. You just go into the rank fours and spam. I don't know. One of you will think of something crazy to do with this thing, and whatever happens, happens. But yeah, I only run two because it gets kind of cloggy. So then, Breakthrough Skill. Features Dolka on it, not direct support, but it's a damn good card if you don't have a Dolka on the field. Because you can use it twice, and the effect of one monster to the end phase twice, but not on the same turn, because that'd be a little broke. So, activate it. I believe it's like a quick effect, so they activate their effect and negates it. Then next turn, they want to activate the same effect. You just banish it, and you get the same effect as you did the first time. So, definitely good card. I'd say probably run a Lost Wind if you're able to, because that's a superior breakthrough skill. But I love the artwork on breakthrough skill. So, if you want to run three, run three. Run two, my, my recommendation. So, because sometimes you get a little bit of a clogged hand, and you need things in your hand, I run three Evil Diversity, because you'll probably draw into one of these and not one of your combo pieces, but this will fetch out a combo piece. So add an Evil Tower or Evil Sword monster from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Evil Diversity per turn, which I guess makes sense because you can search out, like if you have all three of these in your hand, you search out three combo pieces, and that could lead to an OTK, I guess? I don't I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think back then you'd be able to do that. But So I think it's kind of stupid that you can only activate once per turn, but... It's whatever. I'm not mad about it. This deck's old. Now here we have Evo Force. Now I want to say definitely run three of these. I only have two in my possession because every time I go to Frank's to go buy new cards, I always forget to buy 
my third level force because this is a deck I don't use anymore. And with Link Summoning, I can't use it really because all the cards that I need to like Link Summon are probably going to be needed to also Exe Summon. So actually now that I think about it, Evo Singularity makes it available and this makes tributing to build a board to be used for linking a lot easier. So maybe I can turn this into a Link type deck. Maybe they'll get new support that makes links a little easier in this deck. I hope they get new support because, like I said, this is one of my favorite decks. But, yeah, tribute one Evil Tile Monster. Special summon an Evil Sword Monster from your deck. It is treated as if it were special summoned by the effect of an Evil Tile Monster. Main thing that makes it better than the trap, other than the fact that you can activate this instantly, well, the trap you have to wait for, is you get... You get the benefit of this making it an Evotel's effect. So like I said, you do one with a Ninjasho, you get out like two Diplos, you pop two cards in the field, or you get out two Volcanos, and you like basically Monster Reborn two, two Evosaurs that were in your grave, or you go into like two Elias, and then you bring out two that were in your hand, so it helps. It's really good. So, and that's from one card, so if you have two of these and two Ninjashos, that's a full board you can keep doing, so that's not bad. So, by all means, run three, though, because you're probably going to want three. It'll get you out of some tough situations. And these, I could care less if you add them in. I thought they were cool until I really read them. So, once per turn, if you special summon an Evil Storm Monster by the effect of an Evil Tile, then, except for during the damage step, which kind of made me weird because I think I was using it during the damage step a lot, and I wasn't supposed to be. And you get to target a card in the field and pop it. So, replace it with anything that you think is, like, I'm looking at, like, a Regeki, like, maybe, like, a Dark Hole here. You can replace those with that, or, like, Regeki Anti-Spell, or anything else, or, like, the Regeki and the Extra Evil Force, I don't know. I mean, this is only a 40-card deck, so 45 seems to be an okay number nowadays. Uh, extra deck, we got Utopic Future, because sometimes your Exe monsters get all their Exe materials exhausted really quick, like Legia. Or they get Fiendish Chain, so they have no effect. And you can only use two Z monsters with the same rank, but not numbers, so it's not bad. Not the worst. And I'm not going to read its full effect because this is a really long video already, and I'm sorry I bore you guys to death because I don't put any excitement in my videos. I always do this really monotone, and I'm really sorry. Uh, next up, Volksaurus I was talking about. Spot removal, damage, pretty basic, decent body. Solda can't be destroyed while has Xe materials by card effect. And if there were a special summon you'd attach and didn't get the summon, destroy. Decent, better rank 6 is out there probably, so do what you will with that. And of course, staple 3 Dolka because why not negate, negate an effect that activates, destroy the monster. 2300 body, very weak, but good effect, so I guess. And, of course, three Legia, detach two, not one, detach two, so both of your Xe materials negate the activation of a spell, trap, or a summon, and destroy. So, Solemn Judgment on legs, 2400 body, decent, but if you really want to get your most out of this, attach like an Xe unit onto it. I have like two ultimate rares, I think, that I was really happy I ever pulled, but I got three in total. Um, Xe unit, You, it's an equipped spell, you... Equipped to the monster, they gain 500 or like 200 for every star in their rank. And then if they have to detach, by all means, they can use the equip card as an Xe material and detach that instead. So it gives it a little bulk and gives it extra detach power. And I think there's a spell called Overlay Unit that you can you play it and it just attaches to a monster you want it to. So like Acid Golems on the, you know, art of the card, obviously because Acid Golem requires... You need to detach at the end of the turn or else you get damaged or whatever, so. Legia, probably a better use for that. These are just ideas, though. So, by all means, I want to thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you have any suggestions for anything you'd like to see on this channel, leave a comment. If you liked what you saw or you had a few ideas, suggestions, leave a comment. If you're interested in these deck profiles, if I don't end up boring you to death like I think I do, and you honestly enjoy seeing these, by all means, please do subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I have, like, no subscribers. 
I know I don't have a lot of videos, but I have a decent amount of views because I'm, well, I say decent, I'm barely starting. And I don't, I don't mean to get so self promoty like, early on, but, come on, I gotta start somewhere. I feel like this is a pretty fun thing, this is, like, really just a hobby, but if it makes you happy, I'm happy. So, if you want to stay being happy, press that subscribe button. Alright, well, let you guys go, and bye.